In today's video, Santa's Barbarian Helpers battle the minions of Krampus as we play a festive holiday episode of Savage Blades from Crush Pop Productions. Well, hello folks, season's greetings, and welcome to our annual holiday special. I'm Lee, your old hammered host, and I'm here with Lynn, your other old hammered host. Hello. Obviously, we're running a little late with our festive episode this year, but hopefully we can squeak this game in just in time for Christmas. Today, we're playing Savage Blades, rules for super quick barbarian skirmishes from Crush Pop Productions, which also publishes Future Shock, Metal Storm, Death in the Dungeon, and many, many other titles. I purchased my digital copy of Savage Blades for the princely sum of $1 on Wargame Vault, but you can also buy it directly from the publisher if you wish. As you can see, this is a super compact zine format rule set, which even contains a bonus mini game, Maze of the Minotaur. So accounting for that, that means that the actual Savage Blades rules themselves are explained in about two and one quarter pages. My only complaint is that the text in this micro zine is wicked small, so I had to magnify the pages on my computer to actually read it. Still, I commend them on the concept here, a $1 two page rule set that you can play on a two by two or even a one by one mat. So what's not to like? So in today's game, it is Christmas Eve in the picturesque village of Wolfsburg. And Santa's helpers right here have been hard at work all month stoking the holiday spirit. They dragged a giant tree down from the mountains and installed it in the market square. They hunted down the little match girl's father and fed him to a snow lion. And they encouraged the town's wealthiest residents to donate generously to the Wolfsburg Widows and Orphans Fund. Now that their work is done for another season, these merry barbarians have gathered in the local tavern to warm themselves with several rounds of liquid cheer. Unfortunately, Krampus, the scourge of the holiday season, is also at the tavern getting his drink on, and he and his minions would like nothing better than to kick the ho-ho-hos out of Santa's helpers on Christmas Eve. So that is going to be our scenario today, I guess, just a bar fight in a tavern on Christmas Eve between Santa's helpers, the barbarians who come down from the mountains every season to help out with the holiday, and then Krampus and his minions who are out to punish the wicked in the same time period. Just don't interrupt the Red Gobbo's Texas Hold'em game. That's right, the Red Gobbo is in residence. He has reserved a private room, and he has brought some of his friends over for his annual game of Texas Hold'em on Christmas Eve. So they are just bystanders and not involved in today's conflict though hopefully it won't spill over into the private room. And I suppose we should introduce you to the barkeep. This is the dwarf tavern keeper with his favorite pig. And then here is the bouncer, the giant gingerbread man who's gonna keep the peace. So as long as the fight sticks to the main room and doesn't spill behind the bar or God forbid into the kitchen, things will be fine. But if it uh, gets out of hand, then there's a giant gingerbread man right here to restore order with his big gingerbread fists. Okay, as I said, the rule set here is only two and a quarter pages long, and we're going to wing it. We're going to wing it like we've never winged it before in that uh, neither of us have played this or even uh, done a sample turn or anything like that. So we're just going to learn as we go and play some Savage Blades here in the tavern in the picturesque Christmas village of Wolfsburg. So we're going to try to learn this game on the fly, but I did write up uh, two war bands. That is uh, Santa's Helpers and then uh, Krampus and his minions. Each warrior in Savage Blades has six stats, which are range skill, melee skill, arcane skill, armor, willpower, and health points. Willpower is optional, and that has to do with uh, if someone is killed within a certain range, does uh, your warrior uh, lose heart and run off? But we're not going to play that. We're going to say these guys are all good and drunk and in the tavern, so nobody's running away. The overall point value for each warrior is determined by his or her stat line, basically adding those up with the ranged melee and armor stats being weighted more heavily than the others. In a sample game, warbands will be roughly 50 to 80 points each. The warbands here are both 77 points, so that's kind of on the high side. So maybe I beefed up their stats a little more than you normally would, but hey, it's Christmas, and each team has four fighters on it. So this warband here, these four guys are Santa's helpers. These uh, three warriors in the front are from the Mantic Northern Alliance, army set and they make pretty good Santa Clauses when you paint them with the appropriate colors and so uh, good job Lynn on your festive barbarians here. 
And then these guys over here are Krampus and his minions. Krampus is a Reaper mini, and the snowmen come from War and Christmas Village. So Santa's helpers, they're led by Magnus the Merry right here. He is a 28 point fighter. He doesn't have any ranged attack. He doesn't have any arcane attack, but he has a six on melee. So that is the max you can have. Plus he's got pretty good uh, hit points. He's got five hit points. This fellow with the bow here is Felix Navidad. He has a ranged attack, which is gonna be useful, but he is not much of a melee fighter and he only has three hit points. So he's not quite as tough as Magnus. This guy with the uh, bone uh, pick here, the bone ax is Cross Kringle. He has no ranged attack. He has a melee of three, so he's about average. Armor of three and hit points of three, so he is just a regular grunt. Back here is Papa Christmas, who is not much of a uh, melee fighter at all, uh, but he does have two spells, Arcane Strike and Healing Surge, so he can either cause damage or try to heal somebody with magic. Then over here we have Krampus and his minions. Krampus is the toughest adversary on the board. He has 37 points all by himself. He doesn't have any uh, ranged attack, but he does have a pretty good melee attack and a lot of hit points and a pretty good armor. And he has two spells, Unholy Pact, which gives all of his friendly units on the board an extra D6 to their armor rolls until the next turn. And Teleportation, he can teleport himself or anybody else anywhere on the battlefield by uh, making his arcane roll. So he can be warping people around the inside of the tavern which is gonna be weird if they got a buzz on already. They'll be very disoriented. They will be. So since time is of the essence, we are going to learn the game while we're playing it for you on camera, which should be an interesting experience, but hopefully uh, the festive nature of today's event will overshadow any production, um, you know. Shortcomings. Shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, do you have any sense of which team you wanna play, the Santa's helpers or uh, Krampus and his minions? I say we roll and find out who plays who. Okay. And speaking of the minions of Krampus, I forgot to uh, introduce them. So this guy here with the sword is Edward Snowman. This guy with the hammer is Nippy McFrost. And then this guy over here with the axe is a Billy Blizzard. And they're all just basic grunts. They uh, have a melee of three, armor of three, hit points of three. So they're cheaper than some of the other guys, but uh, that's because Krampus was so darn expensive with his arcane magics. And they are made of snow, so what can you expect? They are made of snow, so there is that. I guess you could just roll some new ones. Exactly. If you needed to. Lynn says that the high roll, we'll get to play Santa's helpers. I'm so playing Santa's helpers. You're playing Santa's helpers. So we do have a minimal amount of terrain here. It's not gonna amount to much. People can just kind of hop over it during the regular movement, but uh, it will provide intervening terrain if someone's getting shot at. So if there's not a clear shot, that gives the person who's getting shot at an extra die on their armor roll if it comes to that. So this rule book is not only a rule book, it is also a measuring device. So both teams are gonna start off the board. So the presumption is they're uh, in a back room, they're in the restroom, they're uh, outside having a smoke, whatever. And now they're going to uh, re-enter the tavern one unit at a time. So, since I have initiative, I'm going to pick one unit. I'm going to have him enter the tavern, and I'm going to use the short side of the rule book to determine how far he can move. Now, we could stick to that rule, but also we have these squares, because this is kind of an RPG mat. So we could just say four squares or five squares to keep it simple, so we don't have to keep messing around with the rule book. So you want to do that? Yes. Okay, four squares for a short, Five squares for a long. So I'm gonna activate one warrior. It's gonna be Edward Snowman, and he's just gonna move in four squares and march into the tavern like he owns the place. So he's activated. For her activation, Lynn says she's moving her gruntiest grunt, which is who, Cross Kringle? Cross Kringle. He's stumbling into the tavern looking for a drink or a fight or both. So that's Cross Kringle. So Krampus looks through the window, sees that there are Santa's helpers in the tavern. So he uh, turns around, he was going home, but now he stomps back in. So he stomps back into the tavern. He's gonna stomp in his four and that's his activation. Felix doesn't want Cross Kringle to have all the fun. So he's also gonna step into the bar. Felix stomps into the bar, loading an arrow. <laughs> so he's looking for trouble. And the pig is getting nervous. So they hop behind the bar. That was probably wise. All right, so let's see. Nippy McFrost. 
is going to move into the tavern. So there's Nippy McFrost. Magnus sees Krampus in there. It's his arch rival. He has to get into the fray as well. So he's going to stomp in. And finally, we have Billy Blizzard. Billy's going to go ahead and stomp into the tavern as well. So Krampus and three snowmen burst in from the outside, and they're going to cause a ruckus. Papa Christmas also wants to know what's going on, so he's going to follow them in. All right, so Papa Christmas is the spellcaster. He can blast and he can heal. And Krampus uh, basically can buff the defense of all of his snowmen, or he can uh, move people around the board. So I guess that's turn one, so our two teams are now on the board. Okay, so Krampus is going to activate, and he's going to try to cast a spell, and he's going to try to teleport poor Papa Christmas from over here to over here so that Papa Christmas can say hello to the snowman. So Krampus is pretty expensive, and that's because he has pretty good melee skill and also a couple of spells you pay for each spell. And uh, so he needs to roll 1d6, add his arcane skill, which is 5, and get a 9 plus to successfully teleport poor Papa Christmas across the table. 3 plus 5 is 8. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. So the spell fizzles. So Papa Christmas is relieved. Papa's will is stronger. So Papa Christmas did not get transported across the board. So Krampus activated. Okay, Lynn, so who's activating from Santa's helpers? So Felix is going to use his bow Okay. to attack Nippy McFrost. Nippy McFrost here with the big hammer. Okay, so Felix is shooting across the board. We concluded that that table isn't going to be covered because uh, Felix is adjacent to it. That's a rule from other games that can apply to this game as well. Why not? So Felix is going to belly up to the table and launch an arrow across the uh, tavern at poor Nippy McFrost. Okay, so here's how that works. There's no range limit really in this small area. Felix has a range skill of three, so he rolls three dice. Any five or better is going to be a hit. Two hits. Two hits from Felix on poor uh, Nippy McFrost. So Nippy has an armor of three, so he needs to roll three dice. Any five plus is going to be a successful defense, and he'll block a hit. He blocked one, so he takes one hit. So Nippy takes a hit. His uh, hit points are three, so he's down to two. So Nippy is down to two hits, two hit points. Took an arrow in the snowball. All right, so Krampus and his nutcrackers here, they're gonna have uh, Edward Snowman move four. That's the distance of the short side of the uh, booklet, give or take. So he moves up. Now Santa's helpers. So Cross Kringle is going to head off Edward Snowman. And Cross is just your grunt. Cross is just my grunt. All right, Billy Blizzard is on the move. He moves up. So who's next? Magnus the Marion will be next. Okay. A barbarian from the northern wastes who comes down to the lowlands to help with Christmas. Okay, Nippy McFrost is going to remove the arrow from his midsection and move forward four. So you probably told me this, but on spells, is there intervening terrain? There's no intervening terrain on spells, as far as I can tell, and no range limit. You just have to roll a d6, add your arcane skill, and get a nine or better to successfully manifest the spell. Okay, so Papa Christmas is the last character you have to activate. And what is he gonna do? He's gonna attempt to use his arcane strike on Nippy McFrost. So he's gonna try to blast poor Nippy, who's already wounded from taking an arrow. Okay, so you need to roll a d6, add your arcane skill, and see if you can uh, manifest that spell. And if you can, if you're successful, then Nippy still gets to make an armor save. No. What's your arcane skill? Four. Four. Okay, so that's an eight, so not quite. Close, but no cigar. Did not quite manifest arcane strike. And that would be the end of turn two. The end of the turn. And in this game, there is such a thing as facing. If you attack somebody from the rear, you get a bonus on your attack. So make sure they're pointed the way that you want them pointed. So Krampus, right here, is going to activate at the top of turn three, and he is going to try to teleport poor Papa Christmas 
one more time. So Krampus has an arcane skill of five and he needs a nine or better. So spells are hard to manifest. Yes, they are. But when they do manifest, they're pretty darn powerful. They're powerful when they manifest, but they're hard to execute. And Krampus is not successful. He's trying to manifest a spell, a powerful spell, in a tavern that's filled with music and dancing and lights and uh, people drinking, and it's distracting for him, so he was not successful in teleporting Papa Christmas, which he really wanted to do. Excuses, excuses. I think he's just been hitting the grog. He's been, well, Krampus drinks, yeah, he's been hitting something a little heavier than that. <laughs> Some Christmas absinthe or something. I think Papa Christmas is going to give his arcane strike another try. Okay, so Papa Christmas is going to try arcane strike on who? Nippy McFrost. Nippy McFrost, once again. And he does. So he gets a six plus his arcane skill of four, so that's 10. So that's a successful uh, manifestation of that magic spell, which means Nippy McFrost takes three hits. Now he only has two hits remaining, so this could kill Nippy McFrost, but he gets a chance to block it with his armor save. Armor of three, he needs to get a five plus. And three ones. <laughs> so that is the end of Nippy McFrost. There is snow everywhere, and Nippy goes back to the uh, land of the icy glaciers from whence he was formed. Now, if we were using the willpower roll, then if somebody had gotten killed, the other snowmen might need to take a, a willpower check to see if they run away. But since we're using such a small model count on such a small board, that doesn't make any sense, so we're not doing that. But Billy Blizzard is gonna go one, two, three, four, and say hello to Magnus. So these two are gonna fight. Both warriors attack, starting with the warrior that moved into contact, but casualties, if any, are removed after both sides have had a chance to attack. His melee skill is... Three. Three. No hits. No hits from Billy Blizzard. And Magnus is attacking with what, a five or a six? Six. A six. Magnus is a very good hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Magnus the Mary. No hits. He's not a very good fighter today. Too much grog. Too much rum. If both sides survive, they move away from each other equal to one half the short edge. So that'd be two. Okay, they both move back two. All right. It was a clash, like two drunks swinging wildly at each other and nobody was really hurt. So that doesn't count as my move at all. So that does not count as Magnus's activation, no. So he could reinitiate combat and they could fight again. Why not? Okay, so Magnus charges in and uh, it's a battle royale once more. And now Magnus swings first. And Lynn, Magnus did nothing wrong. That'll make sense to the Warhammer people. <laughs> Two hits from Magnus. Billy Blizzard has an armor of three. And he blocks both. Got two sixes. Wow. Now Billy fights back. Fight, Billy, fight. For the honor of the regiment. Oh no. Two hits on Magnus. What is his armor? Three, I think. Three? Yeah, it's only three. Well, he's just wearing furs. And blocks one. He blocks one, so he takes one hit. So one hit off of Magnus. Okay. Now you have Edward Snowman. All right. So uh, Edward Snowman charges in, attacks Cross Kringle, and they're more evenly matched. Magnus is more powerful than the Snowman by far, but perhaps this will be a balanced brawl. So let's see, Edward Snowman rolling three dice. Oops, that's a two. One hit. One hit on Cross Kringle. And he has three armor. Three armor. Need a five plus to block. And you did. did. But now he can attack back. Now he can attack back. Nope. No hits. So the two of them back up. So that's all of Krampus's minions because uh, you killed one, but you still have two Santa's helpers. I do. To move. So Santa's helpers still have two people to activate. That is Felix Navidad and Cross Kringle way over here. So who's activating? Felix is going to shoot at Billy Blizzard. Okay. 
So Felix here is shooting Billy Blizzard over here. Okay, Billy Blizzard right here, and he's getting shot with an arrow, and your uh, ballistic skill is three. No hits. No hits from the archer. Now you have Cross Kringle who can do something. Cross Kringle is going to attack back. So he's going to attack Edward Snowman. All right, Cross Kringle rolling three attack dice. No hits. But you get to attack back. That's right. Edward Snowman attacking back. And no hits. <laughs> <laughs> It's they, that grog again. They flail uselessly at each other and then back up. That is the end of the turn. So Magnus has sustained a minor flesh wound from a, a snowman. But other than that, everyone seems to be okay. The bouncer is wondering if he needs to get involved. But for the moment, they're just watching the show. So Krampus, mighty Krampus, scourge of Christmas everywhere, is going to try to teleport Papa Christmas. He's bound to get it eventually. He's bound to get it eventually. So, rolls one die, adds his five, and he needs a nine. One! <laughs> Krampus does not execute his spell very well. Okay, Lynn, who's activating next? Papa Christmas is going to attempt to use Arcane Strike okay. on Billy Blizzard. Billy Blizzard. Papa Christmas over here, shooting at Billy Blizzard right there with Arcane Strike. And he does it. Five plus four is nine, so he does Arcane Strike. Poor Billy Blizzard, who gets to try to defend. He does. And he better defend because he only has three hit points, so this could uh, basically burst him into a cloud of snowflakes. He gets one more. He gets one more. And uh, no defense. So Billy Blizzard goes poof like a snowball that's hit a concrete wall. And so he is no more. Wow. My strategy was to try to uh, warp Papa Christmas in amongst the snowmen and then just uh, mob him. But it didn't work that well. It would have been really bad for Papa Christmas had I gotten the role I was looking for. Yes, it would have been. Okay. Edward Snowman is going to go rampaging toward his nemesis here. Cross Kringle, and uh, they are evenly matched, more or less, give or take. So, rolling three dice. I need a five plus. Two hits All on right. poor Cross Kringle. You get three defensive dice to roll because your armor is three. And none. None. So, Cross Kringle takes two hits. Cross Kringle takes two hits, so he's only got one hit point left. Okay. So he's reeling, but he gets to strike back. That's the silver lining in this whole affair. That is the silver lining. Maybe he can roll better on his attack than his defense. That's right. And he Two does. Hits. Two hits. Two hits from Cross Kringle on the counterattack. Edward Snowman has an armor of three. Blocks one, takes one wound, and then they both back up. All right, who's moving next? Cross Kringle is going to attack back. So Cross Kringle and Edward Snowman flail at each other like a couple of mean drunks, which they are. So my question is, if you have a snowman and he drinks at the tavern, does he become like one of those boozy uh, snow cones? Could be. Could be like a, a slush with a little vodka in it. Okay, now before you roll that, I did forget one rule, which we can rectify because we haven't taken that many wounds. When you take a wound, Yes. You also have to mark off a point from one of your other stats. Okay. And even if you get healed, it never comes back. So anybody who has taken a wound, so that would be in this case, Magnus, Edward Snowman, and Cross Kringle, they also have to downgrade one of their other stats. So you can pick which one, but it never comes back. So that's something we forgot to do. So that means your fighting effectiveness actually gets reduced the more you get wounded. And you can't be less than zero. So if your ranged attack is zero and your arcane is zero, you can't take it below zero. So for Edward Snowman, either his armor has got to come down one point or his melee has got to come down one point. So I reduced Edward Snowman's armor to two. Now I should have done it at the time, but we're doing it now. So Cross Kringle, who has taken two hits, has to reduce 
two stats, or one stat by two. So Magnus will take his melee down by one, and okay. Cross Kringle took his melee down by one and his armor down by one. Yeah, so that's a pretty important rule, so as we get injured, then our fighting abilities will be reduced. So that would have impacted prior rolls, but we're not going to go and revisit history. We will just proceed. So Cross Kringle is rolling his attack. So now he can only roll two dice. Roll two dice because he's wounded. He got one hit, though. Got one hit. And uh, Edward Snowman has an armor of two now, so he's rolling two dice to defend. And he blocked it. So we back up two. Back up two. So who's activating? So Felix is going to shoot at Edward Snowman. He does have cover, so he'll get one extra on his armor roll. All right, Felix is shooting. He got one. One hit. The nice thing about uh, shooting an arrow is you don't get a counterattack. That's correct. Okay, he blocks it, and I would have gotten one more because of the cover, which wouldn't have done anything, but yeah, so I blocked the arrow. The arrow sticks in the wooden table as it flies over. Correct. And then you have um, Magnus, right? I have Magnus. What is the mighty Magnus the Merry going to do? So Magnus is going to move up okay. here. Is that the end of the turn? That is the end of the turn. Here we are at the top of the turn again. And uh, Krampus, he's overcommitted to this strategy of trying to teleport Father Christmas. But we're in so deep right now, we have to just continue. So eventually, maybe he'll get a lucky die roll and be able to do that. So he's going to try to teleport Father Christmas, rolling one die, and uh, he needs a four plus to get his nine. Gets it! He got it. it. Finally teleports Father Christmas. So we warped Papa Christmas right over here. So Papa Christmas. Yes is going to attempt to use Arcane Strike. Okay. Against who? Edward Snowman. Against Edward Snowman. Okay. So you need a five or better to get your nine. You got it. So you Arcane Strike Edward Snowman. He uh, rolls two dice to try to defend. This could be the end of Edward Snowman. Lux one. So he takes two hits, but... Uh, he'd already taken a hit, so he's gone. These poor snowmen, pff, they're just not that resilient. <laughs> they are not. <laughs> the problem is the, uh, the strike does three hit points, and they only have three hit points. If they had four hit points, then they'd still be around. But they were basically exploded into snow fragments, into flakes and ice shards by uh, Papa Christmas. All right, well, I guess you get to move the rest of your people then and gang up on Krampus. So we'll start with Cross Kringle. So that's Cross Kringle. He's moving up. Magnus is going to move up. All right. And then Felix is going to shoot. And he's shooting at Krampus because that's the only target on the board. No cover for Krampus. No cover for Krampus. All right. Roll away. Two hits. Two hits on the mighty Krampus. Armor of four. So he needs two five pluses to block those hits. Doesn't get any, so he takes two hits. I think he will take uh, two points off of Arcane. That sounds like a good idea since he's mostly going to be doing me melee. <laughs> since he's going to be fighting hand to hand now. That is the end of the turn. All right. Going into the new turn, Krampus is going to go like this and oh. attack Father Christmas from the back. Ouch. Take that, Papa Christmas. So that's going to give Krampus an extra d6 on his melee roll. So that means he's got five. So he has an attack of five. He's going to wield his, uh, his whisk. All right, Krampus attacking Papa Christmas. Big money, three. We got three. That may be the end of Papa Christmas because he's only got three hit points. And he's only got an armor of two, so he's going to take one hit no matter what. Okay. You're going to roll two dice and try to defend. You need to block at least one of these. Yep. He blocks, he blocks one. blocks one. So Papa Christmas takes two hits. What's he going to take his hits off of? We're going to keep our magic. 
Okay. And we'll take it off a of melee so he's got none, and armor so he's got one. So Papa Christmas was not that good of a fighter to begin with. Now he's not a fighter at all, and his armor, his uh, basically his robes have been reduced to one armor value. But he still gets to attack this turn. Yes, he gets to roll his one die. And he doesn't hit, and then they both back up, move back to. Okay, so Papa Christmas has not activated yet, even though he fought. So he is going to cast Arcane Blast, or whatever that is, at Krampus, right? Yep. Okay. Big money. No. <laughs> he was a little stunned. Yeah, okay, <laughs> he was a little stunned. So you rolled a one, you added your Arcane ability, but it didn't hit the threshold of nine, so uh, that spell fizzles. So what else is going on here? So Magnus is going to move in front of Krampus and attack him to block his access to Papa Christmas. Save Papa Christmas. Exactly. It's the war against Papa Christmas. It is. So how is Magnus fighting now? Melee with five. With five? Yes. Didn't he used to have six? He did, but he took one damage. I so. took a damage. Okay. Roll your five. Two hits. Two hits. Two hits off of the mighty Krampus. So, try to block two hits. And I did. He did. I did block two hits. Now he fights back. He does get to fight Rawr. back. Rawr. Melee of four. Melee right? of four. Four Ouch. hits on Magnus. Ouch. Four sixes. Ouch. It was a mighty strike. It was. From the mighty Krampus. This so, may be the end of Magnus. So Krampus strikes a mighty blow against Magnus the Merry, who ain't so merry right now. He is not. He needs to block at least two of these or he's gone. Roll away. So he blocks two, blocks so he two. takes... Takes two hits. Two hits. So, so he's down to two hit points. Okay. And so I guess he'll take his melee down to three. All right. From five? So he was a legendary fighter, now he's just a fighter. Yeah, so back two, back two. Okay. Was that Magnus? That was Magnus. That was Magnus. So you still have Cross Kringle. And Felix. And Felix. All right, so Felix is right here. He's going to shoot Krampus over here. And Krampus is going to get an armor buff because that table is in the way, which is good. So fire away, Felix. Shoot that arrow. Nothing. No hits from Felix. And then you have Cross Kringle. Yeah. Cross Kringle moves into the fray. All right. And we go into a new turn. We go into a new turn. Krampus, being the lone soldier in his entourage right now, is going to try to kill Magnus, or at least uh, put a hurt on him. So the snowmen disintegrated because uh, that's what they do. But the regular flesh and blood people will just get knocked out. They'll kind of get dumped under a table and they'll wake up in the morning with a headache and, uh, you know, a black eye. Okay, Krampus is attacking Magnus. It's a battle of the titans. If I can take out one of your guys, it'll be a moral victory because my snowmen have been eliminated. Of course, why would you want to bring your snowmen into a nice warm bar with a fire? Well, they are magical snowmen, you know. They are magical snowmen. So, melee of four. And two hits two on hits. Magnus. Armor of three. How many hit points do you have? Two. Two. Block one. Block one. So down to one hit point. Magnus is down to one hit point. So I guess we'll take our armor down to two. Okay. So he's going to attack back. Magnus is attacking back. Two hits. So Magnus used to have a mighty melee of six, and now it's down to three. He's basically fighting at half strength. Still, that is two hits on Krampus, who has an armor of four and uh, takes one hit. He's down to three hit points. His arcane is now down to two because he's given up on magic. He's just going to try to do fisticuffs for as long as he can survive. So the two of them back up. Papa Christmas is going to attempt to do Arcane Strike. He's going to attempt Arcane Strike on poor Krampus. Yes, yes, please. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. 
So that's three hits on Krampus with the Arcane Strike. He has three hit points left, so he needs to get at least one block to stay on the table. And he gets one. Okay. He does get one, but he takes two hits. So he's down to one hit point. Poor Krampus. And his arcane ability is going away completely. So he's just kind of flailing around with his bundle of branches there. So you activated Father Christmas. Now you have Cross Kringle and Felix Navidad. Yep. So Cross Kringle is going to do something. All right. He's going to attack Krampus from behind like a coward. So he normally attacks with three. Now he's attacking with four. Cross Kringle is... Uh, Attacking Krampus with that kind of axe pick thing that he has made out of bone. Three hits on poor Krampus. This could be the end of Krampus. So he needs to block at least two of these. Oh, he needs to block three of these. And he only blocks one. So he only blocks one. So that is the end of Krampus. It is a sneak attack from the villain Cross Kringle after uh, Papa Christmas uh, blinded him with an arcane blast. So it was teamwork from the Santa's helpers. It was the only way. <laughs> and I'm sad that poor Krampus didn't get to uh, at least knock down one or two of the Santa's helpers, but that's just the way it goes. So poor Krampus is knocked out. He's under the table. He'll have to sleep it off. And he won't be able to cause any more mischief on Christmas Eve, which I guess is a bonus for the people of the village. So the wicked will go unpunished this Christmas Eve. So a round of rum for everyone, says Magnus. Some hard eggnog. Some hard cider. Some hard eggnog. <laughs> Some really hard cider. What's the hardest cider you have in this joint? And then the tavern keeper says, who's going to sweep up all this snow? <laughs> who's going to mop up all this That's snow? A, who's going to mop up this slop? Who tracked this in here? OK, folks, that is our quick look at Savage Blades from Crush Pop Productions, and I would say that's very playable. Doesn't have a very extensive spell list, but it's fine. You can still do some interesting things. And I do like the mechanic, even though we forgot about it for a little bit, where your characters get whittled down. So they might start out as legendary fighters, but they take a few hits and all of a sudden they're just average. And so you kind of have to make some difficult choices about what stats you reduce. So I think that really makes it an interesting game, despite the fact that it's only two and a quarter pages of rules. <laughs> and meanwhile, the Red Gobbo's private Texas Hold'em tournament continues unabated. Nothing interrupts a good game of Texas Hold'em. That's right. Not even fisticuffs, exploding snowmen, and flying arrows would disrupt a good card game. All right, drink up, boys. Drinks are on Krampus. All right, then. I guess that's a wrap on our Christmas episode. We kind of winged it a little bit, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. We'll be back soon, probably post-holiday, with some more tabletop wargaming stuff. But until then, wherever you are, I hope you're doing well, and we will see you uh, somewhat closer to 2023.